Hi, I'm Will here at Clearly Filtered. Today we're going to be talking about fluoride, which is one of the most controversial contaminants that our filters remove. To learn a little bit more about it, we're going to talk with our president and CEO, Asaya Passwater. Nice to see you. Thanks for sitting down with us. Thanks, Will. No problem. So I've heard about fluoride before, but what is fluoridation? Yeah, so uh, people have generally heard about the word fluoride, but fluoridation is actually the process in which fluoride is added to tap water as a supplement uh, to prevent dental ca caries or cavities, um, predominantly in children. So the process of adding fluoride is called water fluoridation. That's the term that they use. Got it. And so for those of us who live outside the U.S., how would we know if our water was fluoridated and what percent of it is fluoridated in the U.S.? Yeah, so here in the States, uh, it's a three out of four chance. So you're Gosh. talking about, what is that, 75 percent of people in the U.S. have tap water that is fluoridated. Okay. The other 25 percent generally live on a well water or have their own water source uh, and are in more rural areas. Uh, so if you look at like the big cities, if you live near a city, um, there's a pretty good chance that your water has fluoride added to it, not, not just naturally occurring. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. So it's only in treated water. It's not in well water or other natural sources. It can be, except that's very rare. So uh, one of the arguments in favor of fluoride is that it's a naturally occurring thing in the world. There's fluoride, uh, you know, that, that's part of the Earth's makeup. Uh, however, the places where it is naturally occurring are very rare, and usually where that occurs, it's in concentrations that you have to remove it. It's so high, that, you know, it's rural yeah. places in Colorado where um, it, it, it's too high and needs to actually be removed down to a safer level. Got it. Okay. So I guess the crux really of this issue is, I mean, growing up, I was always told that fluoride is a good thing. I go to the dentist and they said, oh, we're going to do the fluoride treatment. Um, it's something that's helping your teeth. Like you said, they put it in the water to reduce or even remove cavities from a population. Um, so we've always been told it's a good thing. Is it a good thing? Yeah, that's the, uh, that, that's the crux of the matter. There's people, I, I would say most people believe that it is good for you. Um, there's a growing number of people who are concerned about fluoride, especially fluoride in the tap water. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I, we, here at Clearly Filter, we try and um, make sure we distinguish between just you know, being against fluoride and being against fluoride added to tap water. Uh, so there is a distinction that needs to be made and oftentimes it kind of gets muddled or confused or conflated together. So, yeah, uh, so what is that distinction? Personally, I use toothpaste with fluoride in it. Okay. So I, I believe in the science behind fluoride preventing cavities. There's, there, that's, that, there's a long 70 years of history of fluoride being used to treat cavities in children and adolescents all the way through adults. Um, that's why you find it in toothpaste. You find it in mouthwashes. But the process of adding fluoride to the tap water uh, is something I personally am against. So I, I don't think you have to be anti-fluoride to be anti-water fluoridation. Oh, I see. So it sounds like one is kind of a topical, just for your teeth kind of thing, and the other, if it's in your water, it's really being ingested. Correct. Big distinction. So yeah, uh, I, I use toothpaste for my teeth, and then you rinse your mouth out and it says, do not swallow. In fact, your tube of toothpaste comes with a warning label on it saying, do not swallow, contact poison control if you have consumed this which, uh, and it doesn't say if you drink the whole tube, it says if you consume more than a pea size amount, which is pretty small, then they don't have that label on fluoride, that toothpaste that doesn't have fluoride in it. So there's a, a definitely toxic element to ingesting too much fluoride. The, the closest analogy I would give is like sunscreen. You mm -hmm. put sunscreen on your skin, but you're not gonna be, that, that's where it has the effect. It's topical, it's, it's, it's right where you apply it. Uh, same with uh, toothpaste, you put it on your teeth, you, shouldn't be swallowing it. Uh, so the theory behind putting fluoride in the water so it comes into contact with your teeth is partially true, but we're concerned about it, what it does inside of you having consumed it. After you ingest it. Correct. That's, that's a good analogy. Are there any benefits to fluoride except for cavities? I mean, would there be any reason that you would need to swallow fluoride in order to get the benefits? No. So all of the science behind fluoride, it is, it, it's, it's not a nutrient. So there's not, no, it's not a mineral, it's not something that your body requires for some bodily function or, right. or for some system to operate. So uh, it is a chemical that does have uh, uh, you know, properties that prevent and, and uh, uh, resist cavity development. So mm -hmm. um, that, that is a topical thing and uh, it's not something that your body requires. Yeah, okay, so 
that makes sense to me that it's something that's just topical and doesn't need to be ingested. You don't even get the benefits if you do ingest it. And it sounds like you've certainly done your homework, but there are big groups. I think the uh, American Association of Dentists, I think WHO, the World Health Organization, all approve fluoridation of water as a, a means, a safe means, uh, to remove cavities and to help people have healthier dental hygiene. So what do you say to that? No, you're right. The list of people who support uh, the fluoridation of water are far outweighs the numerical people who, uh, who oppose it. I think the CDC called it one of the 10 greatest health achievements of the 20th century. So it, it is generally regarded as a, a benefit for the people, especially in, amongst lower income people. Um, the argument uh, for the original starting of, of adding fluoride was that for people who didn't have access to proper dental hygiene and care, um, who couldn't afford to see a dentist, it was a way to uh, systematically up give everyone uh, fluoride treatments uh, daily so that they would have you know better dental health. Okay so we know that about the groups that uh, approve it you said the CDC, WHO and so are there any groups you mentioned that maybe there's some groups that do oppose it? Yeah primarily it's the Fluoride Action Network they're the most outspoken and the most organized uh, um, group they have a lot of sub-chapters that uh, regionally Okay. And uh, yeah, they, they, they have some pretty compelling arguments uh, to, to support their, their position uh, that fluoride shouldn't be added. Yeah, okay. And so what parts of the pro-fluoride, you know, having fluoride in the water, mm -hmm. what arguments from that community do you find most compelling? Well, it started in 1945 uh, as the process of adding fluoride, and I think it was Grand Rapids, Michigan. And uh, Michigan, <laughs> coincidentally, isn't known for great tap water these days, oh, but... Sorry. Uh, yeah, we've been adding fluoride for over 70 years, and you'd think over that amount of time, if it was really harmful, we'd hear more about it or there'd be more side effects. Um, so the, the process, I think, is generally safe. In 2015, the Department of Public Health reduced the uh, amount of fluoride uh, that they recommended be added to tap water, so that's the concentration, and they reduced it from 1.2 to 0.7 parts per million. So the argument there is that yeah, even if fluoride was dangerous, at the concentrations you find in your tap water, it's pretty much safe. So like, that's a pretty compelling argument um, in favor of adding fluoride. Got it. Okay, so what about the other side? What are the most compelling arguments to remove fluoride from your water? Well, uh, so while it's recommended that it be at 0.7 parts per million uh, uh, in your tap water, the EPA limit for that is over five times that. So it could be wow. up to 5.2 times the uh, recommended amount in your tap water every day. Uh, so it's a, uh, the margin of safety is called into question with uh, the concentration that could be in the tap water. Yeah, so if it is going to kind of uh, wired groups in the community, um, like you said, it could be five times as much. So is it going to all different kinds of people in the community? It's not just um, going to people with a certain that need a certain dosage, it can be children or other people, right? Yeah, that's, that's probably the biggest argument against it is that people have no choice. So you can't say whether you want fluoride or not, you can't right. opt in or out. Right. Um, so you're being given, what is a medication? I mean, it's being given to treat something. Um, like chlorine is in the tap water and that's to kill any bacteria or any cysts that might be living in the tap water right. on the way. It's not to treat us, it's yeah. to treat the water. Treating the water versus treating the person. Huh. Fluoride is in there to treat the person. And uh, fluoride is not FDA certified. Uh, it's not really? been tested. So it is uh, considered a tap water additive, uh, but it is, is not given as a medication. It's not an FDA medication. Um, one inconsistency, I think, with giving the fluoride via the tap water. Uh, once again, I'm not anti-fluoride, I'm anti-fluoride in the tap water. Um, is that if you're, let's say you're an NFL lineman and you weigh 350 pounds, uh, that's the same um, concentration in your, his water that you know, my 35 pound child is gonna be drinking. So that's, mm. what, what, they might be getting the same concentration, but the dose for those two people is, dra is 10 times more for the child. So uh, one argument against fluoridation is that children are disproportionately dosed. Uh, that's why they have children's Tylenol, for instance. It's not, um, huh. uh, it's, it's not something that you should be giving indiscriminately of someone's age, size, you know, uh, uh, sex. 
um, weight, uh, you know, all those factors when, when you go to your doctor, those are factors that they take into consideration right. when they're giving you a medication. Uh, so uh, those are not taken into account and can't be when you just uh, apply it to the water system. Yeah, okay. So I think those are some pretty good points. Um, so let's say I, I believe all that and I want to remove fluoride from my water. Do all filters remove fluoride or is it just a particular kind or how no. would I get it out of my water? Yeah, I think most people assume that fluoride's good. Uh, for the people who want to get fluoride out of their water, uh, you don't have a choice. You have to filter it. So you have to buy a filter that can filter it. Right. Uh, most filters do not. Uh, fluoride is very tricky. It is something that is added to the water. So it's not just in there in trace amounts. It's something, uh, believe it or not, it sounds, parts per million sounds really small, but in reality, that's actually a really high amount uh, per, uh, per percentage of, of, of the water. Uh, so it's in there in a higher amount uh, relative to other contaminants that are measured in parts per billion. So you have to get a filter that is rated for fluoride removal. It has to be tested for fluoride removal. And uh, other filters, even if they are rated for things like chlorine or lead, it doesn't mean that they have any affinity for fluoride. Mm -hmm. So you could be using a filter that um, filters other things, but most filters, unless they're specifically formulated to remove fluoride, don't. Okay. Um, so what about like uh, reverse osmosis? Will a reverse osmosis system remove fluoride? Most will. Oh, that's the honest truth. Uh, reverse osmosis does have some drawbacks. Uh, but re most reverse osmosis systems, they, they pretty much strip the water of most everything. But along the way, they have uh, a few drawbacks. One being that they are incredibly complex uh, systems. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you need a plumber to install it. Uh, they require often ele uh, either electricity to operate or they uh, waste water. Um, so you have uh, three gallons to one gallon wasted. You have three gallons wasted for every one gallon it produces. Jeez. So uh, flor uh, fluoride will be removed by most RO systems, um, but it varying degrees. So it's not necessarily removing all of it. You have to check to see uh, what specific testing that they have done and what percentage that they're rated to remove. Got it. Well, that's uh, some great information. We really appreciate you sharing your thoughts and the arguments from both sides about fluoride, because like I said, it is a controversial subject and it's good to get an insight into why we remove fluoride here at Clearly Filtered. Yeah, thanks. Well, I hope, hope more people just do their homework and, and at least have an informed decision more than anything else. Yeah, well, thanks very much. Thank you. All right.